welcome back to the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. The purpose of these episodes is to help entrepreneurs become more successful, avoid tax and other business headaches. Remember to tune in frequently as we will be sharing tips, secrets, and expert recommendations in how you can manage your finances, improve wealth, and grow your business. Please like, share, and subscribe. Here's your host, Liz Soria. Hi there, and welcome back. Uh, This is Liz Soria. I am a tax advisor accountant, and I do specialize in the real estate industry. Uh, One of my favorite ones, um, because I'm also active um, in the circle, and uh, I actually do enjoy going to uh, networking events and meeting like-minded people in my industry, along with doing a lot of social connection and social media, of course. Um, but today we're going to talk about uh, a very interesting topic. Um, and this is, by the way, a series of different videos, short videos I try to do as short as possible, meaning less than 15 or maybe 10 minutes length. Um, and I did talk about my other two previous videos about what is wholesaling and and actually how taxes are you know, um, on, on a type of uh, exchange when we do wholesaling. Uh, I also uh, talked about the second video, I think it was in regards to uh, realtors. Um, there, as you know, there's been a lot of uh, new changes with the new Trump laws. And because of that, uh, realtors have certain limitations. So you might want to uh, look into that video or you know the audio uh, file, which is a podcast. In this one, we're going to concentrate about 1031 exchange. What is section 1031 that most of you hear about it? or perhaps are confused about it. So I'm gonna to try to be as brief as possible here. Like I said, I'm trying to keep short videos um, as a solo episodes. Um, you can always, by the way, all means, always go back and, and look at previous uh, episodes that I have because I have quite a lot with other professionals, expert guests that I do bring to the show. Um, it, it's a variation of different things that can help you also uh, in real estate because I have uh, actually interviewed phenomenal investors in, uh, in, in, in people who are experts in, in this industry. So anyhow, let's talk a little bit about 1031 exchange. So uh, what happened with the new uh, Trump tax law? Well, one of the big, big changes was that now for you to make an exchange, it has to be like, like mine, meaning that you need to have, let's say, a commercial warehouse, and I have a residential building. And as long as it's considered real property, real estate, okay, we can exchange it, all right? Um, Before, uh, which was really sweet, but unfortunately it's gone, um, it was where, for example, let's say that I had a truck and perhaps uh, I wanted to exchange my truck with your single family home. Um, Well, that was possible back then, not anymore now. Okay, so anything that is not like exchange, it's not going to be allowed. So now it's only real estate. So going back, um, let's say that I have had a building for more than 20 years um, and it is a, uh, you know, a rental uh, leasing building. And what has happened is that, you know what, I'm ready to retire. Um, I don't want to get hit with the taxes by all means, you know, Um, the property has obviously, you know, hopefully uh, appreciated in the last 20 years, like the example that I'm sharing. And then what I'm going to do is say, well, you know, instead of being hit with that tax bill, I'm going to kind of defer my tax liability because that's really what you're doing. You're deferring your tax liability. So what you do is you go and buy from, let's say, John and Mary. um, And in this case, you might say, well, you know what? I don't want to have any more that big building with those headaches and the maintenance and all that stuff. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and exchange it perhaps with a a warehouse or maybe a storage facility, which is less maintenance, right? So what's gonna happen with that is as long as the transaction that you have, again, it's under the category of, of real property, it is, value to the same amount or greater than you can make that exchange. Another thing that is really important, I want to kind of pick up some really important bullet points here, is like I said, one, it has to be a real property. Two, it has to be the same value or has to be greater. Number three, you do need to have what's called agent mediator because those are the ones that are going to actually do the paperwork. 
okay? If the paperwork and the transaction through the closing is not done properly, you can lose your 1031 exchange, um, you know, uh, benefit. We don't want that to happen, right? So, for example, I have well-connected connections for many years now and experts who just do that. That's all they do every day. 1031 exchanges, paperwork, paperwork. So if you come to me and say, hey, Liz, I need help. This is my situation. This is what's going on. You can do a, cons a consultation with me. And then I will go ahead and make sure that when I give you that prescription, if you want to kind of look at it this way, I give you a prescription and that one is going to go to someone who's going to fill that prescription, which means it's an expert. It's a service that is going to be able to complete the process, right? Because I, uh, I really see you if i only give you the prescription i don't tell you where to go even though you already know that you have a 1031 and you are qualified which is one of the things that i go through that process with you through the consultation in the paperwork but if i don't tell you where to go to fill in that prescription then chances are you could probably do nothing that's really what it comes down to and well, at least most of the time what i see in the majority of people very few take very few people take action, others don't. Um, but anyhow, going back, so the 1031, we need to have someone who is a mediator and is gonna process the paperwork. And another thing that I think is very important to, to, to understand is you have a time limitation. And it is 45 days to 180 days, okay? Um, so in other words, from the time you're selling your property, you have to sell within that 45 to 180 days maximum time, okay? And the reason why this is really important, because if you fall out of that time lapse, then you will not qualify for that 1031. Another thing that I think is really important to, to, to bring up to your attention is that 180 days, it's not like you're sitting around, you're shopping around. By the time you apply to that 180 days, you have to have three potential properties that you have actually, whether put an offer or something that you can prove on writing, that uh, this is a, you know, a, a solid, uh, you know, contract that you have. It's not only you're going to say verbally, oh, sure, I think I have a property, you know, one, two, three, um, and, um, you know, it's up in the air, and I don't have nothing legally stating that I, I might be, you know, I might be the new owner of this property. It has to be where you have already something in place, whether it's a contract, something legally that states that you might have that potential of buying one of those three properties within that 180 days. And yes, you have to close, by the way, in one of those properties too. So anyhow, I hope this tip has helped you a little bit to understand, hopefully a little more clearly uh, without, you know, the full extent complex of, you know, terminology of 1031 exchanges. Uh, there's other opportunities such as installment payments, um, and that means if you have a free and clear title, by all means, that's another possibility that you can do, uh, you know, find a new buyer um, and let them pay you directly and you get just installment payments every year, like a bank, you you functioning as really a bank. Um, so someone's paying you directly with interest, and yes, you'll be paying money on the interest as you're receiving it, um, but that will be beneficial because what you can do with that is that at least you get to defer also the payments. So if you still want to possess the property and you say, hey Liz, you know what, I, I'm not ready really right now um, to completely you know, sell the property. And remember, if the person who's buying from you or the, or, or the entity, the default on the payment, the property is still yours. So that's, you know, that's a, a huge benefit when you do installment payments. Anyhow, reach out to me, to my team. And like I said, we will help you in the process of all the, on not only the consultation, we will do analysis of what I call a real estate appraiser of your situation and see what we really can do to help you. What's going to be more beneficial? Like I said, there's different, you know, ways of doing things, but whether it's a 1031 or whether it's an installment payment, by all means, we're here for you. And like I said, if you need any other tax advisory service or, you know, um, accounting guidance and how to set up your books, which is extremely important, by the way, when you're doing these kind of things, it better be black and white, nothing in the gray zone, um, because that could create a conflict. Uh, remember that these are legal documents and financials that you have to also sometimes show to the person who's buying the property. Uh, you know, they want to look at the whole picture of the property. 
you know, and one of the things they're going to do is your liens against the property, uh, you know, how, how, how do you keep up with the maintenance? Uh, I mean, you know, what do I need to know that there's going to be any type of maybe city assessments or county assessments against the property? See, so there's a lot of things involved that you have to have your financial statements black and white. Um, so anyhow, I'm here for you. And again, this is Liz Soria, the tax advisor uh, for the real estate industry. And you can reach me out through not only my website, um, but also, like I said, uh, you can listen to the free and many, many episodes that I have about real estate, talking about different, you know, uh, topics. Uh, I also have brought amazing experts, by the way, um, that gives, have given wonderful tips about if you're planning to get into uh, real estate investing or whether you're already maybe a veteran, but hey, we can always learn from other experts out there, right? So anyhow, thank you so much for your time. Like, share, and subscribe, not only to my podcast and my uh, YouTube, but like I said, reach out to me and my team. We're here to help you. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.